Hey guys, in this lecture, we're going to be taking a look at return type declarations. Okay, so we're going to talk about return types and uh, then we'll jump in to our text editor and I'll give you some examples. Okay, so developers may want the ability to declare the return type of a function. PHP 7 now allows us to do that. Okay, so we couldn't do this before. We would just return a value, but we couldn't type, we couldn't have a, a certain type such as a string or an integer or whatever it may be. All right, now one thing to know is that return types are completely optional. Okay, you don't have to use them, but they are available. So some of the motivators and use cases, uh, we want to prevent subtypes from breaking the expected return type. So subclasses have to return um, the same data type as its parent. Okay, we also want to prevent unintended return values. And this also gives us a more robust way to document our return types um, as opposed to just putting it in comments. All right, so here is the simple syntax. Okay, so uh, this here will add an optional return type declaration to function declarations, including closures, functions, generators, and methods. All right, so we just have a simple function here called foo, and you can see we use the uh, colon, and then we specified the type, which is going to be an array. All right, and like I said, this is completely optional. You do not have to do this. All right, so return types, they're optional, but they are required when you have a class that is inherited. Okay, whatever your parent class has for a return type, um, the subclass should have. All right, uh, code with no declaration will work exactly as it always did. The only, like I said, the only time it's required is when a method inherits from a parent method that declares a return type. And also when a subtype overrides a parent, then the return type of the child must match the parent and it cannot be omitted. It has to be there. Okay. So those are the only times that return types are required. Here's a really simple example. We have an interface A and we have a static function called make. We're setting the return type to A. And then down here we have B, which inherits or implements A. And you can see here we're having we have a B. Okay, now this is gonna this is gonna set off an error because since we're inheriting uh, this class up here, it has to match the return type. All right, so you, you would want to change this to an A. So where are return types not allowed? They're not allowed on constructors or destructors. You can't have multiple return types. Um, you can't have return types on a mixed. Uh, when you return mixed, null, or void. Okay, you cannot have return types on those. All right, so let's jump into some code and I'll give you some quick examples. All right, so let's take a look at some really simple examples. Okay, so let's create a function called sum. Okay, and this is going to take in two values. It's going to take, um, we'll say, num1 and num2 and then down here what we want to do is just return num1 plus num2 okay and then down here let's do a var dump to see what it gives us okay pass in here sum and we'll do two and three all right, so let's go ahead and save that, run it, and you can see that it gives us an integer of 5. Now, this is absolutely fine. We don't need to define any kind of return type, but if you do want to, what we would do is just go up here, put a colon, and specify the type, which in this case will be int. Okay, so if we save that, reload, we get the same exact thing. All right, now if we wanted to return this as a string, which would not be recommended to do this, but since we're not in strict mode, we could in fact make this a string. So let's save it and reload. And now you can see it gives us a string. Okay, now if you were to run this in strict mode, which we'll talk about in the next video, I believe, then this wouldn't work. Okay, 
uh, but we're not going to talk about that just yet. Now, if I was to take this this whole thing off and then down here, let's do uh, 3.5. If we reload, you can see that we're now getting a float. Okay, we didn't specify anything here, but since we used a decimal, then it's it's turned into a float. Now, this is a good case where if you want it to be an integer, you could just specify int and it's going to change it to an integer. So to just kind of add on to to what we're doing here, I'm going to comment this out and let's create a function called check type. Okay, and in here we're going to put an input and we're just going to do some checks. Okay, so this here let's do if is float pass in input then we're going to echo float then we'll say else if here we'll put um, is int input then we're going to echo integer okay and then i'm just going to copy this okay and then let's see we get is float is int we can also do is string let's do boolean is bool. Uh, let's see, we can check to see if, whoops, we got to change that to Boolean. We can also check if it's an array. We can say is array. And we can also do is object. And then this last one is just going to be an else. We can take this off. And we'll just say unknown. All right. So now what we're going to do is create a function. And we'll call this foo. Okay. And then that'll take in. Uh, actually, no, that won't take an input. All we'll do is return stuff. So let's say return hello. And then we need to run that check type function. So we're going to say check type. And we're going to pass in the foo function. Okay, if we reload, we get string. Okay, if I type cast this as int and reload, we're going to get an error, okay, because this there's no way that this can be an integer. All right, now if we change this to, let's say, 2 and reload, we get integer. If we say 2.3, save, reload, we're still getting integer, okay. If we change this to float, we can do that. It's a float. If I take off the decimal reload, it can still be a float, even though there's no decimal point. All right, because we're not in strict mode. Let's see. Let's do an array. Okay, so if we return that and we keep it as a float, we're going to get an error. All right, if we take this off completely it knows automatically that it's an array. All right, and we can also, of course, specify that. All right. Now, if we try to return null, save that, it's going to give us an error because null isn't an array, and it can't be, uh, we can't use a type for null anyways, okay, no matter what we put here. So int still going to give us an error. Okay, 
So let's take a quick look at inheritance. Okay, I'm going to just comment that out. And we're going to quickly create an interface A. And we'll say static function make. And we'll cast that as an int. And then down here, we're going to have a class called B that implements A. And we'll create static function, uh, static function make an int. And then let's say return new B. All right, let's save that and run it. Okay, unexpected curly brace. Let's see. Oh, no, that's right. Oh, I don't have a semicolon up here. Okay, so we get nothing. Now, if I change this here to a string and reload, we're going to get an error. It says declaration of B make string must be compatible with a make int okay so uh, this is an example of how if we're inheriting something a class or an interface it has to match the types have to match okay and we'll get an error all right so that'll do it for now in the next video we're going to take a look at scalar um, scalar de declarations as well as strict mode